morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to another reader webinar that is a very special edition that we are going to be sharing with you today. And uh, today's title, as you, since you've signed up already, have read it. So the future of oil and gas industry. Don't worry, it is awesome. And as I have just heard from one of our uh, first speakers, it is a statement. It's not a question. While you guys are settling in, I wanted to give the most important slide of the day before the second part of the session. It's about the presenters. So uh, today's speakers are listed right here on the slide, and I'll let me just go through them and give a quick intro. So we are uh, welcoming to our show Mark LaCour, Editor-in-Chief of OGGN, a very known network in the oil and gas. Uh, thank you, Mark, for joining us. So we have Daniel King, uh, co-founder and director of Energy Now, out of connecting out of Canada. We have Michael Maltsev, connecting uh, the president of Rigor, connecting out of Canada as well. Roth Guthrie, VP of Business and Development uh, at Cashland Solutions, also connecting from the U.S. Rather, uh, myself, and uh, we have a guest uh, from one of our extended uh, client pool. Uh, it is uh, Miguel Nava, so from uh, the company called KC Light Towers. So he's going to be sharing some insights about the digital technology in the oil field services and rentals specifically. So it's going to be very interesting and hopefully insightful for you. Uh, and quickly to go through the agenda, guys, with you. But before I go to the agenda, if you have any questions, uh, an important part, we do have a couple of Q&A sessions. Uh, if you have any questions, feel, please do feel free to type them up right there uh, when you have them uh, in the question and answer uh, control panel button. Again, I hope you, everybody's been able to find it. So on we go, today's agenda. So we'll talk about uh, our conference uh, in general and actually share this new model with you uh, that we're excited to present and also bringing more speakers rather than talking about what we do in the industry ourselves. So trying to enhance uh, the whole thing for you. We'll uh, then move on to the future of oil and gas with Mark. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, the energy has gone, how the oil and gas energy has industry rather has gone digital then we'll stop a little bit for q a and then we move on to very important and sensitive topic it's all about the cash and the cash flow so i'll be more than happy to uh have a conversation with roth guthrie from cashline services who talks money and you can see right there with a big green background it's for the purpose then we'll talk a little bit about what we've done in this specific topic or in this topic of the digitalization and oil and gas and advancement of the technology oil and gas in the past 10 years. So Michael is going to lead that. Um, and then we'll talk uh, about the specific journey of one organization and what they have been able to succeed in and experience throughout the year. So we'll talk about the KC Light Towers. And at the bottom, uh, you can see that I will touch on what we have in store for you. So the latest release that is called Rigor X or 10 years together. Uh, we'll share a little bit of what actually is coming down the pipe uh, that will be even helping our cli future clients and current clients more to organize their activities. Okay, so that's going to be so a very heavily packed presentation. So let me um, then start and without further ado to pass microphone to Michael, President and Powder of Breaker Incorporated. So go ahead, Michael. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm really pleased uh, to see all you here. And uh, through this event, uh, we continue to celebrate our 10 years uh, in business. And uh, uh, we uh, would like to um, move forward uh, and uh, see the brightness of uh, the future of oil and gas. So I'd like to pass the mic to Mark. Thank you, Michael. All right, guys, uh, let's get started. We don't have a lot of time here. Carbon. Carbon is stardust. When you walk outside, every person, every dog, every cat, every flower, every blade of glass you see is a carbon-based life form. Without carbon, we would not be here. Carbon is the fourth most abundant element in the universe. It is everywhere. Now, the carbon that is in you is not unique. The carbon that's in you was in a donkey years ago, a velociraptor, right? An amoeba, a bacteria. Carbon is recycled. No more carbon is being added to the earth. No carbon is being taken away. That carbon recycling is vital and it's natural. And one of the ways carbon is recycled, if you remember from eighth grade biology, is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is when plants take in carbon dioxide and water, they use the energy from sunlight, and they produce oxygen and glucose. That process has went on for millions of years in our world's oceans. It's going on today. 
This picture right here is a bloom of microscopic algae and zooplankton that is photosynthesizing, producing oxygen that you breathe and sugar. Those microorganisms, when they die in the right conditions, sink to the bottom of the ocean in an area that has no oxygen, so they do not decompose. Um, then they get covered with layers of sediment, which naturally, over eons of time, get folded into the earth and get heated and compressed. And that produces <laughs> hydrocarbons. So once you understand what I just talked you through, a little bit of organic chemistry, a hydrocarbon is simply carbon and hydrogen joined together. The fuel that your brain is running on right now, glucose, is hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, right? The difference between a sugar and hydrocarbon is just the addition of an oxygen model. Love renewables. Renewables are a fantastic mix uh, to our energy uh, usage. Uh, if you think about time, our energy mix has always uh, fluctuated and changed. Originally, we start out with biofuels, burning wood. Not that long ago, we thought killing whales is a great way to fuel our, our industry. And now we have more and more renewables in the mix. One of the shortcomings of renewables is storage, right? Now, let's back up. Remember I talked you through how a hydrocarbon was formed? So a hydrocarbon is stored ancient sunlight chemically. No different than a lithium ion battery, other than the fact that we're storing sunlight from eons ago, right? And not present. And by the way, this process I just talked you through about hydrocarbons are formed are still going on. Right here in the Gulf of Mexico in the U.S., uh, we're still having a plankton and zooplankton die sink to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico where there's no oxygen. There's a 10 foot layer of no oxygen covered with sediment of the Mississippi River, uh, and it continues the hydrocarbon creation process. Now, right now, because the earth is not as warm as it was during the Pleistocene or G uh, Jurassic era, hydrocarbons are not made at the same rate, but they're still being made. The world will run out of hydrocarbons about the time the, run the sun runs out of hydrogen. Now, if you're not aware, and you should be aware, if you drive an automobile, the world's going through an energy crisis right now. It's not just here. It's not just in Canada. It's the whole world. This energy crisis is affecting everybody, and unfortunately, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, the Russian-Ukraine incident plays a part in this, but we were in an energy crisis before that even started, right? And so one of the problems with the energy crisis is that it hurts poorer nations more than it hurts us. So here in the U.S., I may grumble and complain that I have to pay 20 extra dollars to fill my car up, but in parts of Africa, uh, the hospitals have no power to run incubators for newborns. It's a horrible situation that we're in. However, it's being fixed. And the reason it's being fixed is because of finance. The world needs abundant, reliable, cheap energy to continually improve our lifestyle, um, also to provide uh, education to, our, our, to, to the world. And so what happens in the oil and gas industry especially is that we're a for-profit industry. Right now, with an energy shortage, everybody is willing to spend a dollar to get energy supply back to where it needs. This energy shortage world that we're in right now is going to go on for the next 10 years at least. And a large supply, a large amount of the, the energy that we will supply to the world will be hydrocarbons, oil and natural gas. The U.S. and Canada produce the cleanest hydrocarbon molecule in the world. I'm going to ask the audience a question. Have you ever heard of a Russian or Chinese oil spill? And the answer is no. That means one of two things. That means they're better at it than the uh, Canadians, Europeans, and Americans, or they don't tell when they make a mistake. The truth is they make mistakes all the time. They care less about the environment. There's oil everywhere. They don't contain it. If they make a spill, nobody cares. There's no EPA, right? So if you're going to produce hydrocarbons, you want North America and Europe to produce the hydrocarbons to lessen the impact to the environment. And this is what's wonderful. We have all these bright young people coming into our industry, helping us with new ways of, of new technology, new processes, new ways of thinking. We are producing hydrocarbons in a way that affects the environment in the least in the entire history of the oil and gas industry. We're doing some of the coolest high-tech stuff in the world. I have seen more AI, machine learning, and robotics practically used in business and oil and gas in the last five years than anywhere else in the world. Now, this technology revolution that's going on is doing a couple of things. First thing, it's making our industry unbelievably safer. The next thing, though, is it's helping us track and, and, and limit methane and carbon dioxide emissions. We can produce zero uh, um, impact zero net zero uh, hydrocarbons easily. We have the technology. It makes fiscal sense. We don't need government subsidies. And it's happening right now underneath our feet. Here's where it gets beautiful. So 
the world is moving up to more modern standards. Most of the world still lives in a rural agrarian society where you have a large family that is your workforce to work your farm, to grow enough food to feed you, and maybe even sell a little bit of it, right? Make a little extra money. But by 2050, three quarters of the world will live in cities. And guess what you need when you live in cities? You need carpet, light switches, duct tape, tires, soccer ball, tennis racket, nylon shirts. All that comes from hydrocarbons. Here in the U.S., <laughs> uh, we burn about 20 million barrels a day. We've been doing that for 30 years. But each year, we use less and less of those hydrocarbons for fuel and more, more of it to make stuff. A hydrocarbon molecule is the most important molecule to mankind. If you're a chemist, you can take that hydrocarbon molecule and make anything out of it safely, cheaply, and in mass production. Without hydrocarbons, we cannot move into the future. Whatever device that you're watching and listening to this presentation on is made from hydrocarbons. The connectivity we have, the internet that's providing this, all the servers are made from hydrocarbons. All the uh, copper wires and fiber optic cables are insulated with hydrocarbons. You cannot make modern life possible, once again, without hydrocarbons. And if you're like me and believe that space travel is important to mankind, a couple of things of interest. So first thing is there's only one fuel that has enough energy density to get us off our planet. It's hydrocarbons. Right now, SpaceX is running kerosene and liquid oxygen. Kerosene comes from crude oil. Their next generation of rocket engines are actually running methane, liquid methane in oxygen, and liquid and methane is natural gas. Now, here's something interesting. By these new improved rocket engines actually are a bit less powerful. Why would Elon Musk spend money and engineering time to develop less powerful rocket engines? Here's my theory. If you look at our solar system, about the halfway point, there's a planet called Saturn. Around Saturn, there's a moon called Titan. Titan is covered with lakes of liquid gas, hydrocarbons. It's liquid methane, right? I think it's a refuel spot. I think SpaceX and his team of expert scientists are planning on stopping halfway out of our solar system and just refueling the rocket engine who's designed to burn liquid methane, which is what Titan is covered with. Oh, and by the way... The hydrocarbons that we've been talking about, including the hydrocarbons on Titan, are organic, right? So they're made from life. So what's going on in Titan that has uh, organic hydrocarbons? We don't know yet. The other thing is the universe is full of inorganic hydrocarbons. It, they are everywhere, right? So hydrocarbons are our future. We're using them now. We use them more and more effectively as we move through time. Um, the impact to the environment, not only can we lessen, but if there is a danger of CO2 release, we are now developing the technology to pull that CO2 out of the air and sequester it and use it for other things. And that process, that carbon capture and storage is powered by hydrocarbons. All right, so... I, I hit my 15 minutes. Anybody that's watching this, you want something useful, take your phone out right now, snap a picture of this. You scan that cue card on the top. Uh, if you don't know, I run Oil and Gas Global Network, the largest uh, podcasting network in the world. This will take you to all of our podcasts. As of today, we have 15 separate podcasts around oil and gas and energy, uh, which by the way, our roots are in oil and gas. Uh, like I said earlier, I think a hydrocarbon molecule is the most important thing to mankind. We will never quit using them, but we see everything as energy. So we have an energy transition podcast as well. We're launching a hydrogen podcast. And then if you're in the oil and gas industry and you're like me and you're tired of trying to figure out where every oil and gas event is, I got tired of that too. So I make my college interns scour the interwebs. And each month we put out a free newsletter where we list all the oil and gas events in one place. It costs you nothing. And that's that cue card to the bottom. And with that, everybody, I'm finished. Thank you very much, Mark. It's been very insightful and comprehensive as usually so uh we'll get back if you guys have any questions to mark i will flash the qr codes later in the day and or later in the presentation and also we'll send it out to everybody who signed up just to make sure that you have a chance to sign up for the podcasts and the newsletter of mark uh and the questions will be asked after the next session and i'm pleased to introduce our next speaker dan king you can find him on linkedin as daniel king so he's the co-founder and director of Energy Now, and uh, he's going to be talking about exciting things in marketing in oil and gas. So take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Nikolai, uh, for the introduction, and good morning, everyone. My name is Dan King, as uh, Nikolai mentioned, from Energy Now. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Rigger and uh, Michael and Nikolai and, and the whole team there for including me today. Uh, Rigger has been a great client for Energy Now and is definitely a great example of what to do with your digital marketing. We might touch on that a little bit later. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'll just do a quick bio of myself. I'll just run through my agenda really quickly. Quick introduction of Energy Now, that'll take less than a minute. 
Um, then I'll talk a little bit about the state of the energy industry. Um, energy Now is a media platform, so we touch on a lot of different topics, and I'll just uh, touch on a few of those. And then, um, as we all have seen in the last three years, energy industry has gone digital, and digital marketing is a huge part of success moving forward as a business. And then the, the final part will be just me covering quickly 10 critical digital tools or trends that we're seeing. Few of them might be a little bit different than you expect. So, um, and then we'll talk about those 10. Okay, so Energy Now is uh, one of North America's largest uh, online news, media, and marketing uh, platforms. We have about 250,000 subscribers and followers. And, uh, and me personally, I've been an entrepreneur and business owner for over 25 years. My expertise is in sales and marketing. I founded Energy Now in 2012 launched the media and marketing platform in 2014 uh, with my co-founder, uh, Terry Winnetoy. EnergyNow.com is our main platform in the US and .com is mainly for Canada. And, uh, but we cover uh, all the news and information in North, the North American market. I also own and manage a digital marketing agency called Big Impact Marketing. So the state of the energy industry, um, you know, pretty much my whole theme is really about digital. I mean, we see it. Uh, both in, I guess, in marketing, but also across the board for energy. Um, it's really accelerated uh, in, in into new technologies and innovations. Um, but what's driving the global North American energy industry? Again, a lot of it is around digital and technology and innovation. But here are the main topics that we see and that we publish every day. It's on energy transition. So the, the transition from fossil fuels to renewables, energy digitalization, I know Mark brought up AI and machine learning and some of those huge part of innovation. ESG, no question about it. Uh, one, you know, one thing that we add to ESG is another E and we call that the economics of the environment in that. Uh, so we talk about that as well. Energy security has risen um, its ugly head in the last uh, few months with the Russian and Ukraine war. Uh, climate change is uh, in the news pretty much every day, and also the lack of skilled workforce in the energy industry. Um, and now I'll just get into the energy service industry. I'm going to go over a few highlights of really more focused on, on marketing, but also marketing is a lot of his strategy, and then talk about those trends I mentioned. So the energy industry and the marketing of the energy services industry is going digital, from dy dynamic websites to emerging video, lots of co digital content, um, you know, the mobile technologies, uh, et cetera. By the way, before I move on to, I am gonna make uh, the full presentation available. I have a lot of notes that go with these slides. So I'd love to, um, if people just reach out to me, I can send those with the notes, or if Rigor is gonna send that out, they'll have those, those slides as well. Um, so energy buyers and decision makers are more connected than ever. Information is more available than ever and ex expectations have changed. All factors have led to a different era in marketing. So really our, the customer has changed. The customer is younger. The customer is uh, very online savvy. Uh, they use a lot of video, webinars, articles to, to figure out who they want to do business with. So this is a uh, basically a diagram that shows that B2B buyers are five times more reliant on digital content to make their decisions. 80% of energy service buyers do their research prior to talking to a salesperson, which was the opposite before. Five, 10 years ago, they talked to a salesperson first. People do their homework now and they come together as a group and, and make, start making decisions. 78% of B2B buyers are influenced by social media and, uh, and other platforms. And 90% of energy industry decision makers will not answer a cold call. And you say, well, where do you get these facts from? Well, we survey and poll our, our companies and our individuals uh, on a weekly and monthly basis. So we know what they're saying and what they're doing in that. So it's not just a random poll that we pull from marketing. The next thing is, of uh, course, selling has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years. You know, we, we started with word of mouth and, and billboards and things like that, and then transitioned into trade shows, brochures, then websites uh, started coming out. And now it's very, it's more of an integrated solution for marketing, marketing automation, which I'll talk about, digital content, online events. It's really exploded uh, from the digital world. 
And the other thing too for competition for all the energy service companies is that there's the more than double the amount of service providers. I mean, direct service uh, providers. Actually, there's over 100,000 companies that make products for the energy industry in North America. But there's over 35,000 direct energy service companies in North America, the competition is very fierce. So current trends, before I get into those top trends, current trends over before and after COVID is, is really interesting. Of course, websites, email marketing, social media is really growing. And things like word of mouth, direct sales has decreased, no question about it. We'll see what happens over the next year, two years, if things kind of kind of or normalize. I, I think it'll just continue. I definitely think that people now have embraced uh, digital marketing and all the tools that uh, surround it. So let's just jump right into my the first trend. The first thing for digital marketing or marketing for a whole is really the importance of having a strategic plan. Um, many times when I go into companies, I'll ask them because they'll, they'll, I'll be asking certain questions on their target market and things like that. And it's very surprising that most companies do not have a strategic plan for their marketing. And actually in a lot of cases, not even their business. So every energy service company should have a roadmap for where they want to go. And, uh, and then you can introduce things like a marketing calendar and things like that that will really help you plan out your marketing and be able to, you know, in a lot of cases, save you a significant amount of money and also get a lot better results. Okay, after you, you start developing and you're working on your, your plan, then I, 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 the second slide I came up was with value proposition. So really a value proposition is what's unique about your product or service or solution that uh, you can bring to your target market better than any of your competition. It's the problem you solve with your clients, how you do it better than your competitors, and also what kind of results that uh, your clients or the prospects will, will receive. A lot of times people just focus on their products and services, but really don't focus on the results or the company. So they just go blah, 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 blah about the product. And most people just say, well, I don't really care about that feature. What are you gonna do? You're gonna save me money, you're gonna save me time. And so that's important to understand and create a one-liner. Um, again, I'm not going to go through it, but this is ours for energy now. And hopefully it's kind of like an elevator pitch. You know, uh, I encourage everyone to do that. It's not that difficult, but it's really important that you do that. The, com the, the compelling website. So the reason why I threw in compelling is that everyone has a website, but usually what happens is they're, they're very static. Uh, the, the content's not changing. But the importance of your website is critical. It's definitely fundamental and foundational. So spend some time, get all the information that you feel is important that you want to convey onto that uh, onto your website. The other thing is SEO, so search engine optimization. Optimize your sites. A lot of times when we go in and we look at websites, there is no SEO. So when people are searching for a certain product or service that you may have, they, it, yours doesn't come up, you're on page five, so they're not gonna find. So again, websites are fantastic. Uh, video too is a great place to put your videos on your website. Because most people, about 40 to 50% of our Energy Now users use their mobile phone. So they're not gonna read a whole bunch of content. They're gonna be, they'd love to read or watch a video that takes 30 to say 30 seconds to two minutes. Not a 10 minute video, but a two minute video that really tells your story. Next is content marketing. Well, that's a big buzzword. And probably even five years ago, I would say to clients, you should be spending about 50% of your budget, your marketing budget on creating content. Content's critical. Um, it really uh, allows you to focus on uh, your valuable, relevant, and consistent digital content. Get it out on your website, social media, and lots of different places, email marketing, which I'll talk about, and get that digital content out there. It's so important. I have a couple more slides. One is we created a presentation called Content That Works. Um, two important things. One is being consistent. And number two is create variety. Actually at Energy Now, we actually, um, we work with companies from their website and et cetera, that there's over 55 different types of digital content. There's tons of different things that you can publish. Featured articles, press releases, product announcements, video, you name it, you got it. Just it's it's just look on your website, look in your brochures. You have lots of content that you can share, and then also a big part of your content should be video. What's changed about video is it wasn't just 
one video, now people are doing multiple videos. It's, it's, it's so important for your overall marketing plan. Uh, it's you know, on energy now, it's our number one type of content and it's only gonna grow. So I encourage people to get it on LinkedIn, get it on YouTube and wherever else you can, you can share videos. I know some companies have multiple videos. Even on LinkedIn yesterday, I noticed one of our clients in North America is creating a lot of their posts using animated GIFs, just short little videos. It's so different instead of just putting a static photo on there. So they've done a great job. Then, so email marketing, it's kind of one of those really kind of forgotten um, tools for marketing, but so critical. Um, we produce and uh, publish over a million email newsletters a month. So we, we know newsletters. The great thing is uh, our open rate is very high, especially compared to social media. Um, it's a great way to target current customers, uh, new customers, and become the real thought leader. That's really what this says. Is there's three main areas that an email marketing program can work. It can be monthly, it can be quarterly, but it's a great way to connect. The second thing is you're building your database. Your database is really valuable. Um, the other thing is you'll never own LinkedIn and YouTube. They actually, they'll change their algorithms and all of a sudden people won't see you anymore. But with email marketing, you own it. Social media marketing, still critically important. I've, I'm seeing more and more companies jumping on board with social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, even TikTok. TikTok's a great way to uh, now to get your short videos out there and it is growing dramatically. So um, don't automatically dismiss something like TikTok. It could be part of your social media uh, marketing program. Next one, another thing that's really changed over the last, say, five years is a sales and marketing automation platform. I encourage everyone to have one uh, as opposed to a bunch of different things that you're using. Um, finding the right platform, whether it's HubSpot, Salesforce, there's several of them, and then just embracing into that and start using that interchangeably between your sales and your marketing. So uh, we use HubSpot and it's fantastic to be able to see what people are doing, what materials they're opening, how long they looked at say a brochure or one of our media kits, uh, gives us a lot of intel. And, and, we, and then it's not really about spying on your salespeople. It's, it's really about giving them the tools that they need. Uh, okay, paid advertising. That's how Energy Now started. We just had banner advertising. We gave people a platform to be able to promote their companies and it really has worked fantastic. Um, there's lots of different websites out there and, or platforms or things like that. You can even go to your association and you can advertise there. It can be events and things like that. For example, Rigor does definitely picks and chooses what paid advertising they do. And they've done a great job of getting their brand out there. Um, so here's just a few examples, but it is a nice way to be able to get new customers. So I encourage you to look into that and pick the right platform for your company. Number nine out of 10 is your client onboarding and retention program. This is something that I kind of, I kind of forgot about how important it is. Um, and there's three primary parts of, of a retention program. Number one is creating and implementing a world-class onboarding. Really, really important. Those first 90 days are critical. Next is effective ongoing communication. And third, creating a client success management program. Um, again, most companies focus on sales acquisition, not sales retention. And uh, they even encourage and, and pay their reps more for new business, where I think you need to focus on your current customers, make them raving fans, and then all of a sudden you get great referrals from it. Uh, number 10, measurement and reporting. So back to the, at the beginning when I talked about having a plan, well, if you, if you have a plan and you do all the right things, you still have to have measurement and reporting. You can't manage what you don't measure. So you've heard that lots of times, but so often I'll go in and say, hey, how are you doing for leads and you know your budget and things like that. And we look at the key numbers, they don't have them, they don't track them, but they'll say, oh, marketing doesn't work. Well, they, they wouldn't know if marketing works. They don't know if digital will work. So in the digital world, there's lots of analytics and information. So I encourage you to get an Excel worksheet, track some of the key factors, um, and again, if you need a little bit of assistance with that, I, we certainly can do that for you. So last slide is just, I guess we're just gonna run right into the Q, Q and uh, Q and A, but also if you want the presentation slide deck, you can certainly reach out to me. There's my email address and uh, thank you very much.
Great. Thank you very much, Dan. It's been very packed and informative, uh, and I like the list of the list of ten. Uh, and it looks like anybody who's now connecting and listening to um, is able now to get actually a one-page strategic plan and marketing calendar from Dan. So I think it's great. And the guys have been are in the industry. So again, the co the whole topic today has been why the future is awesome. It is awesome. That's a statement with all that. And how do we make everybody, as Mark mentioned before, uh, we have, you know, the adult population is divided in two. Ones don't understand and other ones just don't care or don't know about the oil and gas. And this is where the marketing plays an important role. And both Mark and Dan are helping the world to know more and be more uh, informed about what is oil and gas and how to make sure that uh, we have a better adoption of the uh, sound strategy into how we build our futures. Let me let me start with the questions and my first questions to Mark. Uh, really great presentation, uh, very insightful. And uh, uh, do you think that uh, the petroleum engineer can become a space professional in the future? A hundred percent. I fully expect, maybe not in my lifetime, but my son's lifetime, to see spaceships out mining asteroids and planets, and the spaceships are labeled with Halliburton and Slumberjay and Baker Hughes and Weatherford. I hundred percent, yeah. Petroleum engineering combined with big data, combined with the ability to work in outer space, is the job of the future. And I, I believe they will use the fuel tickets for that, uh, so rigor <laughs> futures <laughs> as well. <laughs> Those will be different kind of tickets, so we'll we'll make sure. And it, it oh, for sure, to the yeah, cash. future That's tickets, yeah, yes. So, <laughs> and 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 I think it's a very interesting question because uh, a couple of years ago, or maybe even more now, so Calgary and Alberta is known for the petroleum engineering school or or faculty, uh, and we had one year that was complete drought. No student was applying for the petroleum to be a petroleum engineer, and I think this is a critical thing for people to be aware of. And with this bad rap and the bad PR or uh, for a purpose or out of whatever any other reasons, I don't want to assume or allude to anything, but people have to really base their decisions on facts. And there are many different opinions. So I think we're here only to help us to make sure that we communicate the knowledge and the information and uh, provide the venue for people to, again, to ask questions and be more uh, cognizant of what's going on and have an fact-based opinions rather, I guess. Yeah, petroleum engineers are unique in the fact that they're very specialized. If you're a mechanical engineer and you're working in upstream and the price of crude tanks, you can go work somewhere else in the industry or outside the industry. For for kids that are studying petroleum engineers, number one, there's a shortage of it, which means you can make more money than all your friends if you graduate petroleum engineering. But number two, it's up to you to get some additional skills. So a lot of the big tech companies, I know this from firsthand experience, IBM, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, they're hiring petroleum engineers. They understand technology. They don't understand rock science, right, or reservoirs. And so they, they hire these petroleum engineers for their domain and expertise. So if you're a young person thinking about it, I'm telling you, get a degree in petroleum engineering, learn some big data analytics and maybe a little bit of coding. And then once you enter the oil and gas industry, don't focus just on your job. Make some business connections with some of the tech companies, maybe even some of your vendors and some people outside of your, your influence. And then if for some reason we hit that other 10 or 12 year cycle where the price of oil tanks and you get laid off, you have options. You know, all the petroleum engineers before you, they either worked in upstream or they, they, were, they, they didn't work. And so, you know, it's up to you to manage your career. Yeah, right on. Um, perfect. So I don't see any more questions. I think, guys, make, you can hold on to the questions uh, at the end of the second session, which I'm about to now move on to. All right. And on that note, I wanted to introduce you to Ross Guthrie, VP of Business Development and Cash Plan Solutions. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit uh, about the managing order to cash process. So go ahead, Ross. All right. Thank you. Appreciate uh, you inviting me today. And just a little background on myself. Uh, my pretty much my whole professional career has been. Oh, you're ahead of me now. Has been back uh, uh, ordering cash, order to cash, or credit and collections, as we used to call it back in the day. Um, and, I, and speak to that a little bit. Uh, when I when I started in the oil and gas industry 30 years ago, uh, credit collections uh, was all we did as a department. Uh, we assessed the risk of the uh, AR that we were. The, we were taken on and then, you know, we focused on collections, um, you know, over, over the years, uh, like we, like we've been talking about all morning, technology has changed everything. Unfortunately, uh, coming back up to the previous, there we go. Yeah. Right. There. Yeah. Just, so. 
Yeah, you're messing, you're messing with me, aren't you? So um, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not necessarily. <laughs> no, I'm right on that note. Just a sec. Yeah, uh, we'll this is all I've been. Yeah, this is just let me take a quick pause, but you can continue with an intro, Ross. Just a sec. So, so the um, the order to cash process, like we were talking about, everything else is has a uh, has finally come into the technology world. And years ago, uh, that that was you know a, you know we we're talking about career changing moments with Mark talking about you know engineers you know making strategic decisions for their careers. That was a, the strategic career changing decision that I made was to embrace the technology that was being developed 25, 30 years ago for uh, the ordered cash process and credit collections. Um, and, you know, I embraced that, built a career on it. And the ordered cash process uh, is, is key to, you know, we're, we're talking about how, you know, the, the future is bright in oil and gas. And the, 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 what my focus is always at this point uh, in, in, this, in the trend uh, is to maximize the cash flow for our clients and the technology that, that we have available to us puts the whole order to cash process together now. And there is technology for every piece of that, that puzzle. Um, and so if you, if you think about field ticketing and invoicing, well, that's rigor, you know, and, and, you know, years ago, uh, that process was uh, paper. It was antiquated. It was, it was lethargic and it was so, it was so difficult. Companies just didn't focus on it because there wasn't a whole lot you could do about it. Uh, and, and then, you know, companies like Rigor come along, credit collections, you know, back in the day, everybody worked from a report that they got at the end of the month and they worked on that report for the full month until, you know, the, the mainframe could spit out another green bar sheet of paper so you could know what to, to uh, you know, what was past due. Uh, so, you know, you know, the old adage, you know, time is money, you know, every day that, that, that you're waiting for that report. And then every day you spend, you know, looking at that report, trying to figure out what to do is money lost. Uh, and so the, the, the software that we use and uh, is, is basically uh, real time. So we're looking at invoices that are past due in real time. We're collecting on them immediately as they come due. And uh, then, we, then we're managing the other pieces of this puzzle as well. Dispute resolution. Uh, in any business, no invoice is perfect, right? For various reasons. And, and uh, companies fail to manage dis uh, the disputes that they have related to invoicing. And with that, um, those invoices go to the, to the side and they don't get handled. Uh, the software we use uh, puts them in a special queue. It makes sure that they're managed well because a lot of your money can be tied up there. Um, and e-commerce, e-commerce is huge. I remember 25 years ago when someone said we were going to send invoices electronically and we were like, what? Uh, you mean we're not going to mail invoices anymore? Uh, now, probably our clients, 80 to 85% of their invoices go out through some type of, you know, electronic arrangement, uh, depending on, you know, their choice of how they do that. And, and you have to embrace that. You have to know exactly what data they require, get it exactly right, and manage those portals that they give you uh, to ensure that your invoices are going through. Because if they don't and they reject them, it's not their problem, it's your problem, because you didn't send the data that you agreed that you said you would send. So they just systematically reject your invoices, and you have to follow up on them to make sure that they're being managed. You know, and cash application is always overlooked. Um, you know, uh, automating your cash application uh, and having your cash applied uh, same day, uh, almost real time from, from, you know, the different sources of data you'll have from your banks and et cetera. And uh, all this other efficiency that we're trying to build around dispute resolution, e-commerce in the, in the collections process, even fill, all of that goes to the wayside when you're not applying your cash on time because Nothing goes over. No, no customer wants to be called about a past due invoice when they've already paid it. You just haven't applied the cash. So, I just wanted to add, Russ. Uh, I think an interesting point. Uh, so, the future is awesome not only for the petroleum engineers but also for accountants. I think that's one statement that it would be fair to make. 
Uh, and I think one thing that we had a conversation before, and you mentioned that uh, you can run a business and everything can be run fine operationally, but it's all about the money in the end. So because it's it's not going through motions and it's not enjo enjoying is important. Operations are key, but then the bottom line is actually what drives the business forward. And that's where you can allocate your resources. You make sure that you do it timely and you save time on before you do the job. And where's the money coming in and doing through these and doing it in an organized fashion, making sure that you understand all the pitfalls is the key for a company to run their business smoothly. And out of this 35,000 oil field service uh, companies in the oil and gas, so all of them will need to be able to manage, given the cyclist or uh, the the fact that it's a cyclical nature of the industry. So you have to be, be to be able, even more cautious about how you manage cash. That's I think what we were discussing as well. Would you support that? Absolutely, and, and one way to think about that. I always, I, I made a presentation to a very large group of uh, at one of my prior companies, and and um, it was operational an operations meeting. And I'm speaking to operational people, you know, explaining to them how important it is for us to 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 uh, collect our cash faster. And and the the point that I made with them was, you know, with the cash that we can generate from collecting better, we can buy more equipment, we can generate more revenue with that equipment. And you know, it, the equipment is expensive, but with the opportunity that we had at that company to generate that cash flow. The amount of revenue that the additional equipment could generate was massive. And so that is exactly the point. You have to, you know, cash is king. You, you can't run a company, no matter how much you sell, no matter how good your products or services are, unless it generates cash flow. And so the automation and the technology behind that process has advanced a, a lot in the last 25 or 30 years. And each one of these, these pieces of the puzzle used to be a completely manual process, and it is no longer. Every one of these is automated with the right software, um, giving your team the right tools to do a very difficult job it is always, you know, always critical. Uh, and that, that's where this, I like to piece this puzzle together for everyone to realize that it's not just credit collections, it's not just every one of these have to work well together to maximize the cash flow. So the next slide will give us a little illustration of what I'm talking about on maximizing the cash flow. So typically getting a uh, bill ticket to invoice uh, at 20 days would be my, my assessment. In my career, I've seen it take 20 longer, depending on the type of service you're providing, depending on the complexities of it. Um, but 20 days is a good, uh, you know, a good number for us to work with. And, and there's, you know, there's amount of time spent with very manual processes. And then there's an amount of time that we, none of us like to talk about of trying to get proof of delivery and who's going to sign the ticket, who's, <laughs> who's going to approve that the work was done. And that proof of delivery is, is a necessity in the process, but it, there's 20 days spent there. And then typically without automation, companies will, like I talked about before, they'll, they'll work with, reports, even if it's a weekly report, let's just say you, you wait five working days before you actually follow up on an invoice. That's five days gone of finding out maybe that invoice uh, was incorrect when they got it and they're just waiting for you to correct the invoice. Um, five days is too long, a week is too long. You know, every, everything gets down to counting, maybe a day is acceptable. Um, you know, some, some of our clients, we work intraday by getting data on an hourly basis to update the data that we're working with. Um, so time, time is money. So in that process, it may take 80 days to turn that work you've created into cash. So for 80 days, your money is in the ether, just waiting for, for the opportunity for you, to, for you to get it and use it for something to, to grow your company with. So if we go down to the optimal process and we, we throw a solution like rigor onto the bill ticketing and you go from you know, one day to a couple of days, three days maybe, uh, of getting from end of work to bill ticket uh, to invoice, you know, you're, you're cutting out you know, uh, 17 to 19 days of your money being lost in the ether, um, which is every day is money. So, go into the collection process, now you've got a more valid invoice, fewer errors, and, and the collection process becomes 
less tedious because there's less disputes to follow, which is quicksand for a collector. It, you know, uh, those take a lot more time than getting validation that an invoice has been received and when it's going to be paid. But then once that data is gone into an automated collection system like ours, then that invoice is going to be in a work queue the day after it's due, whatever the terms are, and our collectors are following up on those invoices on that day. And, and the follow-up isn't like the old days of where's my money, because it used to be when you're at 80 days and you don't have your money, it's panic and you need it now. You should have had it, you know, you wanted it 50 days ago, but now it's a problem. Well, our process is that, you know, at 30, if the terms are 30, at 31 days, our phone call is, did you get this invoice? Do you have any issues with it? Any reason that you don't see it being paid on time? It should and it's a customer service versus a hardcore collection effort. Uh, it's great for relationship building. Uh, we build relationships with financial people in order to get these invoices paid, in order to, to know what their requirements are to get the invoices through. And we're, we're in the relationship building uh, business. We're not necessarily in the collections business. Um, and with that, with that process, our our clients average days to pay is 47 days the industry average is 77 so we're 30 days better than the average and if you apply our average to that timeline and rigors average of one to two days for a ticket then let's say you drop it from 80 to 50 days to from the time that you would get your money with a typical manual process to an optimal process with the technologies that are available then, okay, go ahead and hit the next slide. I think it'll bring up. So here's the value to that. So if you're running a business that does $20 million a year in revenue, a 30-day improvement is dollars a day cash flow improvement. So $1.6 million in cash flow. Now it's a one-time benefit. It's a one-time influx of cash. You can't get it twice. But maintaining the processes means you're going to maintain you know, this type of cash flow continuously. So the value is in these in embracing the technologies, uh, in embracing the whole process, and making sure that all of it's working well together, not just you know a piece here and a piece there. Unfortunately, the industry has has been very uh, siloed with these pieces and and bringing those people together and becoming one for the one cause of ultimately creating cash flow um, is has been my career goal uh, and that's what Cashline does. We plug ourselves into companies that need this service and we use our software and we partner with people with companies like Rigor and we bring in people that uh, have you know. Uh, complementary software and solutions, and we help these companies optimize their cash flow. Think we're think we're good, and yeah, we go. Perfect. Yeah, so I would compare that what you're just describing, Russ, is that you get a good coach, and then the coach helps you to get into good training routine, and then you will never then experience the uh, the slumps in performance. You'd rather be going towards your specific goal that you set as a business, if you are a sportsman, uh, as a person, rather. So I think it's good. Uh, and it's good to have a good coach uh, by your side who has got experience and knowledge and knows what they're doing. So that's perfect. Thank you very much. So on that note, uh, let me move on to the next presenter of our today's uh, presentation. Uh, it's going to be Michael Maltsev, uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about 10 years of uh, success at Rigor. So go ahead, Michael. Yeah. So um, again, it's a very uh, you know mixed uh, feelings about 10 years uh, Kind of uh, when we started uh, in 2012, uh, it was a very, very, uh, you know, foggy, foggy future. But right now we have the team of uh, uh, 21 professionals uh, and very uh, educated, uh, well uh, prepared people. And I'm really blessed to to work with all the guys. Uh, and it's uh, uh, right now we uh, have a mm, four international awards uh, for, for the software. Uh, we building the, the first offline mobile application uh, for the entire industry. Right now we have uh, seven 
plus two new applications, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, the uh, building the partners network, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank all our partners uh, for the every single day support. Um, the uh, definitely we collecting uh, the and gaining the knowledge and experience of the, the oil and gas focusing on the oil and gas industry and uh, right now we have 134th webinar uh, so are we uh, uh, transferring this knowledge uh, to the uh, our our community uh, we have five star user support uh, the average satisfaction is 4.9 uh, and uh, we're really proud of the, our support team, uh, which every single day help our clients to move forward. Uh, we are certified uh, by ISO, and we are moving forward to certified by SOC compliance. Uh, so uh, it's the ongoing process. Globally, we presented at four different countries. Uh, never imagined that uh, that will happen uh, 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, uh, we have a digital oil field academy uh, with six uh, uh, online courses uh, for the users, and one course will be ready uh, at the to the end of this year. And definitely, uh, we have a growing uh, uh, network of our clients, uh, and I'd like to thank all our clients for believing us, uh, uh, for using our product every single day, and. Uh, moving forward with, uh, with us. So, uh, you know, uh, when we trying to prepare this uh, uh, presentation, uh, kind of uh, guys asked me, okay, can you share like 10 happy moments of uh, uh, that journey? And, uh, you know, I tried to find 10, but, uh, you know, it was thousands of uh, happy moments every single day they uh, uh you know collaborate with the people uh you know uh running different places traveling uh, uh back and forth uh, uh north america uh europe and uh, all, all other places you know making our clients happy it's all all kind of kind of uh happy moments and this is the kind of 10 happy moments from the last week uh from midland uh, texas uh, uh meeting with clients and uh you know, uh, it's always, always a pleasant, uh, pleasant thing. So, and I'd like to share kind of 10 ideas about the business uh, uh, and uh, talking about um, different, different uh, things. Uh, again, a very short, maybe, maybe first step to, to prepare kind of uh, the philosophy of the business and, uh, you know, uh, but the, let's start from the first. Uh, business is about people. Uh, we communicate with the uh, employees, we can communicate with the uh, clients, uh, partners, vendors. Uh, so communication is important. Uh, personal communication is a key. And uh, it's very important to build the trust. Uh, the second thing, the technology converts good business to great. It means that business needs to be prepared to implement the new technologies. So uh, the, the, we're talking about people, people, knowledge, experience, motivation. Uh, we are talking about resources, budget, time, hardware, and management, vision, goals, strategy, and structure. So everything should be in place before we apply technology. Uh, otherwise, it will be a really tough journey and really hard to implement anything. So there is no problem to execute expense budget. Definitely. The situation with income budget is a little bit different. So hire slow, uh, fire fast. So uh, at the certain level, you can choose with whom you uh, will work. And uh, this is a very important thing. Uh, and it's important to, important to have uh, same values and the team match. Uh, to avoid future conflicts uh, in the team, and uh, uh, it's 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 very important um, uh, thing. So uh, we treat our clients uh, as our partners. Uh, so uh, we uh, help them to build the businesses, uh, to develop their business. They help us to develop our product. Uh, we're happy to see them, that most of our clients having significant growth with rigor and um, we will keep doing that uh give more receive uh before receive um the um this is a very simple principle that uh, uh any profit required initial investment time money energy focus 
travel more uh travel to see other land other life meet people share ideas it's very helpful and insightful and uh uh, give us uh, uh, understanding uh, and better understanding how people live and what they think, what they do, and uh, how the entire world looks like. And of course, uh, uh, you have a, a chance to test a good food. Know your why. So identify the big idea, uh, set the goal, uh, which will combine the entire team together. Uh, this will help. Uh, you know, sometimes my guys tell me that uh, I will do this thing uh, if they, uh, for free. Uh, again, not for protocol. <laughs> uh, definite, definitely, uh, we love what we do, and uh, it's very, very important. Just try. Uh, do not afraid to try, experiment, uh, adjust, and do it again. Uh, you know, sometimes people are afraid to make a first step or, or second or third. Uh, and sometimes it requires 10 steps or 100 steps to uh, reach the result. Uh, and uh, we tried every, every single day, um, different approaches, different uh, uh, features of our product. Uh, uh, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes not. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, you've got the experience and understand and have that feeling uh, what's working, what's not. And of course, say thank you as many times as you can. And uh, I'm saying thank to our team and families uh, for dedication, hard work, uh, and everyday uh, uh, every support. I'd like to thank uh, to our partners and vendors uh, for the support and ideas. Uh, I'd like to thank to our existing clients uh, for making us better. And I'd like to thank our future clients because we do everything for you. Perfect, thank you very much. And on the note, an important one, uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, we actually show you this real people that, uh, that we have been working with. And uh, so the next uh, short section will be more about the uh, a, an existing client, KC Light Towers. And uh, I think we have uh, Miguel, right? So they're on the line who will be more than happy to uh, share his experience. So go ahead, Miguel. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Miguel, I'm with KC Light Towers. So I'm dispatcher for KC right now. Uh, right before we got into rigor, we were like, uh, I think Ross was talking on this, is we were using paper and it's crazy to think that we were on paper, right? We're in 2020, 2022, and we were still ticketing on paper. We were still tracking jobs on paper. So it just, it blows my mind that we were there and we're just so advanced, right? So we finally made the move to go ahead and start using rigor, which was awesome. And a very neat experience. You guys got a very good support system, very good team working with you guys. Uh, Blair, I think his name was, he came and helped us out a few times. He's always texting, following up with us. So everything is going perfect. The experience has been awesome. So we're diving into the mobile app you guys are using for our field guys to be able to use that. But other than that, we've been using the, the invoicing side of it, the tracking equipment, to measure it, it's kind of, it's almost unmeasurable, right? To be able to measure the revenue and just the, the impact Rigor has had. And if I had to guess, it's just, just this, me speculating, if I had to guess, I would probably say it's close to, or over $200,000 between missed jobs, uh, equipment left behind, invoicing. We had, I can't even tell you how many invoices we've caught where they're five, six months old and then the client no longer wants to sign them because they've already done closed out that job, closed out that ticket. So, and this is going to be work. This is going to be good with Ross. And I'm, I'm definitely going to follow up with what Ross was talking about on that cash line and uh, give it to my bosses because we definitely need to look into that on the invoicing side of it. Um, just the cash flow, kind of like Ross touched up on. But other than that, rigor has been a very good experience. Um, and it's very easy to use, very easy to use. Everybody was kind of panicking at first and, oh, it's a new system and, you know, we're not going to be able to use it. And like anything that you do that is new, it's always going to be a small challenge. But luckily, rigor was not that big of a challenge at all. And the support system we had made it made it so easy. It's it's just it was awesome. And we have we have you on thank record, you. Uh, Miguel. So thank you very much. And how big is your how big is your organization? So how many guys you have in the field, and how many? Uh, I think you're focusing. Given the name, you're focusing on on light tower rentals. So how many? How roughly? How big is your rental fleet? 
Yes, yeah, so we have, I mean, we have about 60 employees. We have close to probably 30, 40 of them are field techs. And then mm -hmm. as far as rentals, we have, so light towers is not the only thing we do, which is uh, sometimes a pinch. And right now we have about 300 light towers and I can't even, I can't even begin to tell you how many we've forgotten or left behind on location. Okay, so, and then we have, I mean, if a uh, total rental fleet, we probably have about 600 units out in the field within light towers, you know, offices, generators, within everything that we do, probably about close to 600 pieces of equipment out there. And it's, it's crazy to think that people are actually rolling the dice on taking that chance of leaving equipment left behind because it's like leaving money on the table. It's almost like you're leaving a hundred dollar bill scattered around everywhere, right? Um, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not willing to do that. So it was a very good move when we went to Rigor, an awesome move. Um, we're still, we're six months in. We started using it and we started training in March. It took us 30 days to implement it. We went live in April of this year. So we're in six months of running it. Everything has been good. We haven't had no issues at all. And um, it would be nice if there was a way we could measure the impact it has had on us. And uh, that would be neat to see. Um, and it's funny because right before we went to Rigor, we were also using an online system and it it happened to crash on us um, in January and it, it held everything. It held all our billing, it held every single job that was open and it got some type of you know bugs in it or something and we never got it back. So we probably lost, dear God, maybe $500,000 in there because nobody, it was just in that computer system and nobody knew nothing about it. Nobody knew the jobs, nobody knew. And it was just, it was crazy. So that's when we made the switch to Rigor, which was a very good idea. Perfect. Well, I think Michael was just all the smile and that's a great reward. I think we didn't know and was not staged. So we do appreciate this honest uh, feedback. And we're always striving, as Michael mentioned, we're always striving to do better, to enhance the product and make sure that it does deliver the value because we are treating every client as a partner, not, not as a client whom we are needing to close the deal on and necessarily collect the money from. We want to make sure that your success is converting to our success. Yes, sir. And I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to thank Miguel for your words because, you know, uh, we mentioned that uh, kind of uh, happy moments. This is a one more. Yeah, so, definitely. Thousand, <laughs> thousand one. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really enjoying working yeah. with you. And uh, right now we we're dealing with the uh, your um, equipment maintenance department uh, implementing yes. uh, maintenance module, and it's uh, again the the process is very smooth. Yes, Perfect. we're excited for that, and we can't wait to see the guys in the office are like, oh my god, what well, you should have seen him when he got out the meeting with um, your team in rigor. He was like, oh, my God, Miguel, this thing is going to be, you know, it's going to be so awesome. And uh, so hopefully we're looking forward to that. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. we too. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, and on that note, I know, guys, we're running over uh, a little bit over the time. But the, the idea is that we've got a lot of good stuff for you to make sure that you feel comfortable about both the industry, about the products and about the future. And speaking of the future, uh, we as part of our product development strategy, we have released the the 10th, uh, the anniversary version of Rigor. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what actually it's going to include. And there's a few things that are in the shop for us to share with you guys. And uh, so namely, uh, we are making a lot of changes since a lot of things have now evolved in the technology world and they were trying to be, and our goal is just to be on par with what's new in the world. So we are continuing to make sure that we are mobile driven first. For everybody who is in the field, we understand that uh, we gotta be very efficient and need to be able to do a lot of things on mobile first. And since, uh, since uh, Microsoft has come out with a lot of interesting platforms that are integratable because we're all cloud-based. So we can now integrate effectively with Microsoft products as well. And one of the things that we're working on is two new mobile applications uh, that are going to be built on the um, the Microsoft, what's the name of it, Power Michael? Power Apps. Power Apps, Power Apps platform. Yeah. So those two, those two mobile applications focusing on the uh, mobile purchases uh, to record mobile purchases and tracking expense claims. Yeah. 
So then the next uh, thing that we are releasing with this latest thing is that we all know about Microsoft Teams. We're, we're meeting in Zoom now, but a lot of meetings are now held in Microsoft Teams, even externally and internally. So we are building actively the Microsoft Teams integration, which means that you can have a lot of different things done between Rigor and Microsoft, and that includes specifically having an approval process. So basically, you can have your internal chat where you in Teams you communicate, but the documents that are generated or managed in Rigor can then be pushed into Teams and then you can approve them and have a seamless integrated workflow. So that's also yeah, uh, and here. Here we talk. Here we talk about purchase orders, uh, rental service agreements, and expense claims. Uh, is a key document that we have at the very beginning that we set up in the system. So the next one is the Rigor desktop offline. So those of you who are clients have seen how Rigor works. So uh, it's a cloud-based uh, with a full access onto the database uh, that is on the desktop. Uh, we also are releasing the offline version of Rigor. So which is very important when you need to have the full capability of the system, but you don't have an internet. We know, we know the, the, the touted 5G is out there somewhere. We don't see it in the oil field a lot. That is, if it, there is a number, it doesn't work necessarily at a speed that it's required to be able to process a lot of information. That's why we're coming out with an offline version of the Rigor desktop that will enable uh, enhanced and more uh, comprehensive uh, job handling when you're on the computer in the field using the database uh, in the offline mode. Uh, so the data import and export enhancement. So that's, again, we are continuing to make sure that Rigor integrates with systems and you can put the data in and output the data for the analysis specifically. And some of this includes uh, the import of the price codes because when you have multiple uh, inventory fleet items that you need to price code because you connect everything to the finance at the end. So you need to be able to manage the data effectively and uh, add additional value to the information that is in the database. So we are enhancing the capability of the system that way. Uh, so the next uh, one is, and you can go ahead, Michael, uh, to talk a little bit about new features that we have now released and are about to roll out to most of our clients in the uh, current use pool. Yes, so the, the new features include uh, different improvements uh, and uh, uh, different uh, features uh, uh, included uh, uh, truck service records, uh, the truck maintenance uh, and repairs, uh, quality requirements, client quality requirements, vendor quality requirements, uh, job projects, uh, giving us an ability to combine several uh, RSAs together and uh, create uh, uh, one invoice uh, and uh, create uh, uh, one quote, uh, uh, combining several uh, several RSAs. Uh, price codes uh, give us an ability to uh, combine and manage price more efficiently. Uh, there are the price codes, uh, uh, multiple business entities, uh, 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 this feature added uh, uh, more flavor so uh, you can or you can run several several business entities uh, within one database and uh, more than 100 different uh, other small improvements uh, of uh, user um, ex interfaces uh, and user experiences. So we will release this uh, um, uh, as an October 27th, uh, this will be official date when we will present uh, all those features uh, at our next webinar. And uh, if you'd like to see ours in person, uh, the next week we will be in Louisiana at uh, Energy Fest. So uh, please stop uh, by at our booth, and uh, you know you can uh, chat. We can chat and talk about your particular case, your particular company. Perfect. Thank you. On that note, I wanted to thank you guys who have been kindly presenting today uh, your vision of the future of oil and gas, which is going to be awesome. Uh, and I hold you to that, Mark. Uh, till the end of my left. Go ahead, Michael. So you wanted to add something? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to. I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate the, Dan with the ten-year anniversary as well, because uh, he mentioned that uh, he started the company in uh, 2012. So what's a what was a year? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's more conceptual. Oh, yeah, it was more conceptual in 2012, and we actually officially launched in 2014. So, um, okay, but it, it takes time, you know, to, to germinate and, and figure out exactly. And actually, when we first started, it wasn't going to be Energy Now as a media platform. It was going to be something similar to LinkedIn. It was going to be called Energy Link. <clears throat> but okay, okay. We we pivoted. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. You did, you did the right turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. So uh, again, thank you guys uh, very much.
Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for this uh, uh, great event, uh, and uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, talking with everyone. And uh, I hope that uh, we will have uh, more uh, events like that in the future. So we will work more, uh, to, towards that. And uh, again, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, revisit our, our, and we will send you the link. And uh, I think that it will be really fun to watch this presentation again uh, on YouTube. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everybody who signed up and participated in today's webinar. So we're looking forward to connecting you with the next uh, couple of weeks. And we're always online on LinkedIn and all the other social media channels. Please do follow us and reach out anytime you want. Thank, thank you, you so much. And uh, see you next time. Yep. Thanks a lot, everyone.